This is Jacob from RoboFlow. Today we're going to talk about occlusion techniques and computer vision. First, we're going to talk about why you need occlusion techniques and computer vision to build better computer vision models. Then we're going to talk about where state-of-the-art research is and occlusion techniques. And after that, we're going to show you how to get hands-on with your own data set to use occlusion techniques to make your own model better. So kind of diving into why we need occlusion techniques, uh, computer vision models are like all machine learning models. That is, they often fine tune and overfit to a specific training data set. And then they're not able to generalize that well when they get into the wild. So in this graph, we can kind of see a little bit of an example of how that might work mathematically. So we have some noisy data, which represents the way that a task might manifest itself in the world. And then our model is actually fitting to this data in a very tight line and it's getting kind of overfit here to be a very specific function. Whereas, you know, once you go into the wild, things are actually gonna manifest themselves differently than the way they were in the training set. So that it's not gonna be so easy for the model to generalize when it gets out into, uh, into a production environment. So oftentimes you'll see curves like this during training, which shows that you're actually uh, suffering from overfitting during training. So this is uh, where your, your training loss is going down. So it's learning the task well, but uh, the validation loss is actually has a kink in it where it starts going up, meaning that uh, basically that the, the model is overfitting to the training set, but it's not learning, not continuing to learn ways that it can generalize outside of that. So what, what does occlusion techniques do for you? Well, occlusion techniques are a, a specific way to combat against this. So basically occlusion techniques are, are designed to hide a part of the image. And, this hiding of the image during training means that your model is going to actually learn around hidden areas of, of the image. So for example here, we might have a model that predicts a uh, cat or dog based on a photo. Um, and if we look at the CAM, the class activation map for this model, we might see that all of the predictions are happening at the, uh, the dog's head. So like, for example, in this image for the CAM, you can see that uh, the prediction dog basically all relies on uh, this dog's head here. Um, and that's, uh, you know, not, not such a good thing because what if uh, this dog was like hidden behind a bush or something? Um, it wouldn't be able to predict dog or cat because it's already kind of overfit to this very specific part of the dog's face. Um, so we might use an occlusion technique to kind of hide where the dog is it, where the dog is. So now kind of diving into the different occlusion techniques that are out there. Um, so uh, for example, you have uh, the first one is a uh, random erase. So here's random erase. It's basically just taking a piece of the image and erasing it. Um, this is kind of like implemented randomly and then you replace the, the rectangle with just noise rather than the base pixels. Uh, similar technique is uh, cutout, um, where there's kind of like cutout rectangle out of the image. Um, the difference in cutout in the, the original paper at least is that uh, they're only hiding those pixels from the first layer of the network. So they're allowing the future layers to, to see um, the area that would cut out. Um, and then another one is called hide and seek. So this one just like kind of draws a grid over the image and then randomly hides someone's in, in, the, uh, in the grid. Uh, this one's called grid mask. So grid mask is uh, doing a similar thing except it's not probabilistically uh, hiding uh, areas of the grid. And then, so those were kind of the predecessor uh, occlusion techniques. And now there are like some even better ones that are coming out. Uh, so the best occlusion techniques are, there's this one, cut mix. Um, so cut mix is uh, where you're not actually just occluding, you're actually cutting out a piece and then you're putting in a piece from a different image. Um, so this does accomplish the same goal as occluding, but it also teaches the model to learn how to recognize uh, objects and classes within different environments. So not even the, the context can even be different. And then taking it kind of one step further is this uh, augmentation technique called mosaic. Uh, so mosaic is not technically an occlusion technique per se, um, but it is kind of accomplishing similar things. So a mosaic is stitching four images together and kind of looking at them in different uh, places in the image. So this accomplishes a few things uh, to uh, help with regularization, so to avoid overfitting uh, of the training set, in that it's teaching the model to learn to recognize objects in different locations, teaching the model to learn if it's sort of slightly occluded on the edge, 
Um, and then it's also teaching the model to learn in different contexts. So it doesn't only have the same uh, surroundings, it has uh, various surroundings in the mosaic uh, data augmentation. So all of those things are all pretty powerful. Um, and that is a new state-of-the-art uh, augmentation technique. So now we're going to go kind of hands-on with an occlusion example. So here we're going to jump into uh, the RoboFlow platform. So let's say we had a chess data set. We wanted to build an object detection model to identify chess pieces in an image. Um, so you would start by doing this by gathering a data set. So we have this data set um, that's uh, public on RoboFlow. So that's public.roboflow.com. And uh, you can see these images here where you have chess pieces that are um, labeled. Um, and you might you know, have nice pieces uh, like this that are not occluded. So this king is like very visible um, and has nothing in the way. But um, in this case, you, know, you might have a pawn that actually is like kind of slightly blocked. And so if you're training only on pawns that are not blocked, and then you get into a scenario afterwards where the pawns are actually blocked, they might have, the model might have overfit to a specific part of that pawn. And to avoid this, you're going to want to try to experiment with occlusion techniques to make your model even more resilient. Um, so one, one way you can do that is uh, by adding an augmentation step. So here's uh, the augmentation steps within the RoboFlow platform. If you add an augmentation step here, um, particularly we'll, we'll look at the cutout one here. Um, which is what we were talking about where um, those rectangles were, were hidden from the image. We have a slightly different implementation here where we're kind of randomly uh, cutting out different pieces and you can add more than one cutout um, to your training set. So here's some previews of how it might work. Um, so you go here and you can add like more cutouts. You can make them bigger. Um, and then it'll kind of randomly generate these cutouts over your images. Um, so you can you can add a lot of these. Uh, you can crank the augmentations up, so then you can get a bunch of these occluded images to send through training. So to make a data set version, we'll just go ahead and hit generate. And I'll say this one is just called occluded. So, so yeah. So that's uh, basically getting hands-on with occlusion techniques uh, to make versions that are even more robust and to make uh, models that are even better. Afterwards, then you can export kind of anywhere uh, you want for training um, and you can use one click training here too um, to see kind of how these occlusion techniques are uh, making your models even better so that's all for today looking forward to seeing you guys next time remember to like and subscribe and thanks so much for watching see you